welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marissa. I am a stay-at-home mom. I have a two-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. I am also a military spouse. My husband is in the United States Army. We are currently stationed at Fort Huachuca, Arizona. And a lot of videos here on my channel are day in the life vlogs, motherhood, that kind of thing. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a few things that I wish I didn't do as a new mom, a few things I wish I stuck to, and basically just like the mistakes I made as a new mom. So if you're interested in hearing my mistakes, things I wish I didn't do, and maybe it'll help you not make these same mistakes, go ahead and keep watching. So the first mistake I wanna talk about is not letting my body rest, not giving myself that period of time after having my son, after having my first child, to re let my body rest, you know. Um, after I had my son, we were in the hospital for two days, and then we got discharged to go home. And I remember getting home, I took about a four, five hour nap, but as soon as that four, five hour nap was over, I started cleaning the restroom. I started getting laundry ready so I could wash clothes. I was trying to figure out what I was gonna make for dinner. I was making a grocery list. Like, I felt like I was just gonna get back into my normal routine. And guys, I regret that so much because I did not let my body rest. I had this thing in my head where I needed to get home and just get things ready and you know try to get this routine started when I was really exhausted like looking back I can remember how exhausted I was but you know the kind of person I am I'm always like go 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 I always like to do things and I remember my mother-in-law telling me like leave it alone like I'll do it like and she helped a lot guys so I'm not saying this to say like oh she was there and she was helping she was cooking she was cleaning she was helping a lot with my son you know feeding my husband as well um and she also helped like feeding my husband, making sure he was fed, making sure I was fed. But I felt like because she was our guest, like I needed to help her when, you know, she flew to North Carolina to help us, you know, become new parents. So I regret looking back at that moment where, you know, that first week and a half, I was like trying to get a routine and like, I just should have just let my body rest. So if you are a new mom or if you're pregnant, when you go home, let your body rest. If family members are there to help you, let them clean up, let them do the laundry, let them take care of you and your baby. The second mistake I made was worrying way too much about what my body looked like. I still had my mom pouch, that belly that looked like I was pregnant for about a month or so after giving birth to my son. It didn't really start to go down until after that first month. And I just remember like thinking like, oh my gosh, I'm not sexy anymore. I didn't want my husband to look at me. My husband did end up getting deployed two weeks after my son was born, so he wasn't really around too long. But I remember those first two weeks um, of me being home, I didn't want him to look at me, you know, even to change, you know, before having, you know, before becoming pregnant, I would change in front of him like, no, like nothing. Um, I would shower with the door open and you know, that kind of thing. But I remember after having my son, I didn't want him to like be in the same room as me when I was changing. And I remember trying to figure out what to wear was really hard and like, I felt like nothing fit me properly and it just was like an awkward stage for me where I just did not know what to wear and I just wasn't comfortable and then so I remember sometimes I would cry or I would just feel really insecure when who cares about that like don't worry about what your body looks like after having a baby because you just had a baby your body is still trying to go back to how it was your stomach is still trying to go down you're still healing the only thing that I should have worried about was just making sure that I was drinking enough water because I was breastfeeding making sure I was eating and just holding my son and just enjoying those moments because the newborn stage goes by so so fast so the third mistake I made after becoming a new mom is not saying no and what I mean by that is after I had my son two weeks after he was born my husband got deployed he had to go for an emergency deployment so he left and I had met this girl who her husband was also deployed and so she had an eight month old daughter I believe or nine month old and you know my son was a newborn so she would text me here and there like hey like let's go to coffee let's go out to the shop stuff like that and I just had a baby you know I wasn't even a month into motherhood and so like I said before I was exhausted but I felt like because her husband was deployed and my husband was deployed you know I felt like I had to be there for her um, because she took it really really hard and so she would invite me to go places and as much as I didn't want to go I would be like okay like let me get me and my son ready and I'm gonna meet you here and anytime I would meet her first of all she was always late whenever we had to meet at the coffee shop or the mall or wherever um and then she would complain the whole time and so here I am a new mom my husband is employed and we were not prepared for this deployment I'm learning how to be a new mom I'm learning how to breastfeed and I'm here trying to be a good friend to this girl because you know her husband is a so I sympathize with her but 
I needed to rest. I needed to rest. I needed to learn how to breastfeed better. I needed to learn my son. And so say no. If you don't want to go somewhere, if you don't want to do something, if you don't want to get ready, don't feel like you have to. If you just want to be home in your pajamas and just hang out with your new baby, that's all you need to do. Don't worry about, you know, trying to get back into this routine and, you know, I need to go out. I need to do this. I need to do that because I felt that way. And so I just wish I would have just said, um, no, I, I don't want to go to coffee today. After like the 10th time of hanging out with her, I did start to say no because I just felt like it was just draining my energy. So don't be afraid to say no. The fourth thing I want to talk about is letting other people influence the way I parent, the way I do things as a new mom, um, overly sharing things. So one of the mistakes that I did was I would always second guess myself because I was a new mom. You know, I was like, is this right? Is this right? Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? So, you know, I would text my mother-in-law. I would call my friend. I would call my cousin. I would call so many different people and get so many different opinions. So then I was like, okay, is this person right? Or should I do this? Or should I do that? So I just overly thought everything, like every little thing. I'm like, is he eating enough? Um, what time should we wake up? What time should he go to sleep? Um, should I do this? Like I said, I just overly thought everything. I was an overthinker about everything. And so I wish I would have just chilled out and like learned on my own, you know, tried something myself. And then if it didn't work, be like, okay, this doesn't work. But for every little thing, I was like texting everyone I knew and asking them their opinion, their advice. And you know, we all as moms, we parent differently. We have different views. Yeah. So I definitely regret oversharing everything that I was doing as a new mom and overthinking everything like God created you to be a mom and he's gonna guide you and if you need help from somebody then go ahead and go to one person you don't need to go to 10 people the fifth thing that I want to talk about is not sleep training I wish I wish I wish I would have stuck to sleep training so when I first became a mom even before I became a mom when I was pregnant I was like okay the baby will sleep with me for like a month or we're just gonna go straight from the hospital and training him into his crib and so i got really lazy you know i was breastfeeding breastfeeding is extremely exhausting if you breastfeed you know what i'm talking about it's really a job um so i got lazy and i would just let my son sleep with me and then when my husband got deployed you know for that comfort i let my son sleep with me but then about at like three four months i was like okay maybe we should try to really put him in his crib but I just, I just never stuck to it. You know, I'd put him in there sometimes for naps and then I would let him sleep with me and then I just didn't stick to it. And then I also, this goes into saying what I said before about letting people influence me. There were a few family members that were like, you don't need to sleep train. Like there's no such thing as that. You know, back in my day, we didn't sleep train and you know, we just let them stay up to however they want. And you know, I didn't pay attention to those sleep cues. I didn't know that babies have sleep cues and that every certain hours they need to go to sleep, that they need to be up for this amount of time and then they need to nap for this amount of time. And like as they get older, you know, their stretches of being awake are a little bit bigger and then they need to sleep at this time. So I really wish I would have paid attention to that um, because like his, my son's sleeping was terrible. Up until about now, um, he's gonna be three in December, his sleep has gotten much better. But we struggled the first two years of his life. It was really hard because he just was not a good sleeper. And I really feel like if we would have done sleep training and stuck to it, we as parents would have been well rested and had, you know, more patience because we would be, you know, we would be, you know, full of energy. Be like, okay, we got that sleep. But sleep was a very, very big struggle for us in our household. So I really wish I would have just stuck to my guns and stuck to sleep training. Um, because I feel like that would have made a huge difference in, you know, me being a better mom and my husband being a better father because, you know, we were so sleep deprived. So I wish I would have stuck to sleep training. And if you're considering sleep training, I would definitely encourage you to go and research on YouTube, um, sleep training, um, techniques, um, look up. I know that there's one called taking care of babies. Um, it, you have to pay for that one, but I've heard so many good things about that one. So I would definitely look into it. If you want to make sure that your baby is sleeping good, you're sleeping good, daddy's sleeping good, because you guys all need sleep to just be better. So that is one thing I recommend is sleep training. The sixth thing that I want to talk about is breastfeeding. So if you're not a breastfeeding mom, you can just skip this part to the next one. Um, but for all of my breastfeeding mamas, I wish I would have pumped. When my son was born, I had intended to pump as well because I did hear a lot of good benefits from it. You can build up a supply by pumping. Um, if you need to go somewhere, if you wanna leave the baby with dad, they have a bottle, the baby can you know, 
you drink their milk from the bottle. So I did start pumping after we got home from the hospital. I wish I would have started pumping at the hospital like they tell you to, but of course I didn't. I thought I knew what I was doing and I thought I could just handle it on my own. We got home, pumping was super hard. I had no idea that you have to have the right um, flange size for your breast. You have to have, you know, there's just a lot that goes into pumping and breastfeeding. I'll probably make a separate video for that, but I wish I would have stuck to pumping because, you know, um, it just would have made my life, it just would have made my life easier. I feel like if I would have just pumped as well, because when my husband got home from deployment, when my son was about six months, um, I wanted to like, I'm like, Oh, I want to go get my nails done now. Oh, I want to go get my hair done or, you know, just have that me time. I want to go get a coffee by myself, but because I didn't stick to pumping, you know, my son was just used to my breast. So if I went to the grocery store, I was like, okay, I have an hour. I need to hurry up and get home. If I want to get my nails done. Okay. I have an hour. I need to hurry up and get home because you know, there, were, there was a lot of times where I would try to go do things for myself. And, you know, he'd be asleep. My husband's like, yeah, I think you can go. Like, you know, he should be fine. And then I get that phone call like, hey, are you almost home? He's screaming his head off. We need your boob. So I really wish I would have stuck to pumping um, because I feel like it would have helped so much. Not only for me, but, you know, for my husband to be able to bond more with our son, um, you know, he would have been able to feed him and stuff like that. So I really wish I would have stuck to pumping and not just exclusively from my breast. The seventh thing I want to talk about is documenting everything. I wish I would have just enjoyed those beautiful newborn moments, those like early few months of his life um, by just enjoying them, not having to film everything, um, not having not having to always want to take a picture of everything or, you know, make sure he has a cute outfit so I could take the picture or, oh, his shirt's dirty, let me change his shirt so that way I can take a cute picture. Like, who cares? Like, I, like I said, I know we live in a generation now where everything is social media. Everything has to be so aesthetic. Everything has to be so perfect. But guys, that does not matter. Like, your baby does not need the cutest outfits. Your baby does not need the cutest aesthetic background. Like, your baby is precious and wonderfully made. And so, just nurture those moments where they have spit up on them, where they just threw up, where they pooped their up their whole back. Like it's okay the next thing i want to talk about is comparing milestones so i didn't really compare my child um up until probably when they're supposed to walk so around when he was like 12 months i started noticing other babies that were born the same month or around the month that he was born and they were walking um and so i was like okay what is going on why aren't you walking um, and so that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made is that once I started seeing other babies that were born around the same time as him walking or like trying to walk, I got really worried and I started, you know, calling my sister-in-law and talking to her about it. One of my friends I talked to about it and my mother-in-law and I was just so worried. I was like, what is going on? Like, why isn't he showing interest in walking? Um, you know, why isn't he walking yet? Everybody else's child is walking. And so looking back i wish i would have just not done that because for one i'm not giving my son the time that he needs to you know do things on his own and i'm putting pressure on him like why aren't you walking yet like what's going on you know i'm starting to put things in my own head and so i really wish i didn't do that because he did start walking it, it wasn't when he was a year it was two months later but he started walking and so don't compare your baby don't compare your child's milestones to other kids milestones because every child is different everybody learns differently for example my son started walking about two months after his first birthday and then my daughter on the other hand she started walking about two to three weeks after her first birthday and i think that's because you know she sees her big brother running around and jumping and she wants to do everything he's doing so don't compare your child don't compare your child if you have a concern it's okay to have a concern as a mom as a parent you know we should be aware of certain things but don't overly think it you know, your child is going to do things when they're ready um, and if you have a concern, of course, take it to their doctor and then go from there. The ninth thing that I want to talk about is overly buying. Guys, I overly buy. I get it. You're a new mom or you're pregnant about to be a new mom and you want to buy everything. You want to buy all the trendy stuff, all the cute clothes, all the cute baby gear, everything aesthetic. I was that person. But guys, I overly spent on things that we didn't even use. I would say about... 50% of the things that I bought from my son, we didn't end up using. I either donated it because he outgrew it, it was too big for it. I gave it away to friends or family members because he was too big for it. Um, we didn't get a chance to use those clothes or he just didn't like certain toys that I got him or pacifiers. I overly spent. You do not need to overly spend. You do not need to overly buy things. For one, 
in my opinion buying cute like clothes for your kids for those first six months is dumb i'm sorry i'm just gonna say it's dumb because like you're gonna be home and yeah you might go to the grocery store and stuff but first six months of my son's life he literally just lived in onesies and i was just washing the same onesies and reusing them and that kind of thing i didn't really put any like cute outfits on him i did maybe for like certain pictures like for every month i would do like a cute not even honestly i didn't even do that i think i just did the six month cute picture um i mean of course i took pictures of him every day but i wasn't like dressing him up every single day to get those cute pictures a lot of the pictures i have of his first six months were just like him being him you know would spit up on him i have this one picture where he literally as i was taking the picture he like threw up and i have that picture and i love it and i think it's like so adorable and i love him so much so you do not need to overly spend and buy all these trendy things like don't feel the pressure of oh i need this name brand and i need this name brand because honestly you you don't you really don't i mean if you have the money and you want to do that like more power to you but you do not need to do that like your baby all your baby wants is to be fed to be hugged to be kissed to be changed and to be loved and that is the most important thing so girl do not feel like you need to go out there and spend like racks and racks and racks on all these like super expensive things for your baby because your baby's not gonna care last thing i want to talk about is not doing enough research on medical things so like vaccinations doctors um things like that i wish i would have done more research and you know who the provider for my child was going to be because just a little backstory the first pediatrician that we got for my son was terrible that pediatrician's office was terrible they never wanted to answer any questions i had here i am a new mom my husband is employed in another country i can i don't really have access to talk to him and i have all these questions on why do we need this vaccine um sleep schedules um feeding times am i feeding him enough just i had so many questions and guys this nurse at this doctor's office always had attitude she never wanted to answer any of my questions she always just tried to like beat around the bush with certain questions i had i did end up switching my son to a different doctor's office and that doctor she was amazing answered every question i had she would sit there and talk to me make sure i was okay before leaving like making sure okay do you have any other questions are you sure that you understood my answers that kind of thing so i really appreciated that doctor i just felt like they really cared about my kids and not only my kids but us as parents um so definitely i recommend if you're a parent make sure you know who you're taking your kids to um and if you have questions you are allowed to have those questions as a parent no one should be not wanting to answer certain things especially when it comes to like vaccinations and stuff i'm not against vaccines um, but you know, sometimes I do have concerns. Lastly, I want to say that I wish I would have prayed a lot more um, Because if you don't know I am a Christian. I believe in God um, I'm really big in my faith and I wish that I would have talked to God more in the season of becoming a mom because I felt like you know being a new mom it, It's a lot you guys um, especially the newborn stage. You're trying to figure out your new body You're trying to figure out your your child if you're breastfeeding. That's a whole other thing and so I wish I would have just talked to God and said, hey God, like I know you see the season I'm in, like help me be a better mom, help me um, do things better, give me more patience, um, help me be that nurturing mom that you created me to be because I didn't do that, you guys. Like I did pray in the sense of I was always thanking God for my family, thanking God for my new baby, but I never asked for help. I feel like as a believer, as a Christian, like God wants us to do that. God wants us to talk to him. God wants us. He knows everything already. He knows what we're going through. He's just waiting for us to open our mouths and ask him for that guidance, for that help that we need from him. Um, so yeah, that's another thing I wish I would have done. So if you're a believer, pray mama, like ask God for all that help that you're going to need because this new season that you're in, is going to be long and hard, but it's also going to be so beautiful and so worth it. All right, you guys, well, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed making this video. I've always wanted to do a video like this. Um, and I think I'm going to do more videos like this as well, where I just sit down and talk to you guys. So if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I appreciate all of you guys so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not ready and I will see you guys in my next video.